hello this is overlord boat and we're back with our ship review video and today we'll be looking at the new premium tier 9 italian battleship the juispe verde now you can get this ship starting for 19,300 doubloons starting on december 23rd and let's look over the armor real quick as you can see right here 32 millimeter bow with an aft at 32 millimeters very nice armor there also has a slight turtle back right there and a pretty much on the water let's see a barely above water citadel there okay okay has a slight turtle back okay now i would not recommend this ship and i will go over the reasons why in this video so first let's look at the build so after it, it goes on freezing so the build is going to be main armament, DCP-1, secondary, steering gearing, concealment, main battery modifications. Now I would do preventative maintenance, priority target, the two secondary ones right here, adrenaline rush, fire prevention, and concealment. Now with the build out of the way, oh. I also forgot to mention that you can switch the spotting or the fighter up to you, of course, but I prefer the spotting. All right. So with that out of the way, let's go over the ship stats while we watch the uh, video. So let's hop on to it. All right. So this ship has a, let's talk about survivability. This ship has 69,100 uh, HP for its health. Has 32 millimeter bow and stern with a 55 millimeter deck. The ship also has 26 millimeter forward sides and 60 through 70 millimeter upper belt. Well, this ship does have a 320 millimeter belt armor. It has the exact same armor layout as the Tier 9 Premium Marco Polo and also has a waterline citadel with a 27% torpedo protection system. Now, the ship does have the lowest HP pool four tier nine bbs it does have a decently protected citadel though notably weak underneath the rear turret now the ship does have a small superstructure and a 55 millimeter deck armor now this deck armor can resist all but goliath he and bb he so it makes it very tech tanky against he fire now it does have an above average torpe torpedo protection as well now, while the Dress Bay Verde looks vulnerable on paper, her effective survivability is much higher thanks to her well-armored deck. Also, it has good maneuverability and access to fuel smoke. However, her vulnerability to torpedoes and that she takes a secondary build cuts into her survivability, making her roughly average, slightly above average at best, but a little bit, but throughout my time playing it, it definitely feels below average in the end now let's talk about the primary guns now for the primary guns there are three triple 406 millimeter 50 guns with an abxy layout now these guns do have a 30 second reload 36 uh second turret traverse and they can fire broadside 30 degrees to the rear and 30 degrees off the bow now these guns do have a 19.1 kilometer base range with a 1.7 sigma now these do also have extremely fast shells as well now these are these exact same guns as a marco polo but with he instead of sap and ap does less damage the ship does have excellent gun angles it can fire 30 degrees off the bow and stern which makes it very good for kiting or pushing it as well but it does have poor main gun damage output due to her poor dispersion and average reload times. The ship does have excellent AP pin, similar to a Georgia and Musashi, of t in terms of raw armor penetration, not overmatch. And I repeat, not overmatch capability. Like the Musashi that can overpin 32mm armor to the bow, this ship cannot do that. Now, its AP shells deal less damage than most other BBs, 
Now, it does have extremely fast shells, like we said before, like other Italian BBs, but it's and it's only beaten by the Slava on just how fast these shells go. Though the Giuseppe Verde's main gun performance is overall is below average to average, they can still form proficiently effective in many situations. The 406 guns can overmatch 27mm armor uh, common on tier 9 cruisers, and their excellent pen can Citadel BBs even at long range. In addition, the Giuseppe Verde's fires some of the fastest shells in the game, with only Slava being faster. She requires less lead than other BBs, making hitting evasive DDs in cruisers easier. However, in practice, Giuseppe Verde's poor accuracy and somewhat limited main battery range often lets her down. Her guns are still a credible threat and complements her secondaries in case the latter cannot be used. Now let's talk about her secondaries. Now she has four uh, triple 152-55 uh, guns with sap shells and 12 twin 90-50 guns with sap shells. Now these are 7 kilometer base with a 10.5 kilometer max range and the normal secondary accuracy which is quite bad sadly. Now these sap secondaries have a very high damage output thanks to her sap shells though the 90 guns are less effective versus BBs. Now these SAP secondaries also have a shorter range than other secondary focused BBs, so you have to fight to get closer to be able to use them. Now these can fire full broadside 40 off the, off the bow and, and stern. At 30 degrees, can still fire all but three of the 90 millimeter turrets, a safer alternative. Now, the Juice Bay Verde's gimmick lies in her powerful sap secondaries. Though shorter range compared to other BBs, their sap shells are very effective at melting lightly armored BBs and cruisers that stray too close. However, sorry, what truly sets the Juice Bay Verde apart is a combination fuel smoke, which allows her to safely farm for 70 seconds. Unfortunately, targets that must be bow in and experience the full duration of the secondaries or risk a broadside turnout. However, her 90mm guns have a limited penetration and will struggle versus more heavily armored BBs. Also to note that she needs to show nearly full broadside to fire all of her secondaries. Also noting that she needs to show... Sorry, I said I apologize. If the player sacrifices three of the twin turrets, um, she can keep the ship angled at 30 degrees to keep the majority of the secondary fire. Um, note that the sap only have at normal accuracy and are less effective versus DDs and heavily armored BBs. Now let's talk about the airstrikes. The airstrikes can store two uses and the depth charges do 3,700 damage per depth charge and six dropped per attack run. Now these do have a range of 10 kilometers and reload in 60 seconds. Now these are the same depth charge attacks as the IGN and Italian BBs and they're decent airstrike capabilities though not on the same level as the uh, Royal Navy BBs. Well, let's talk about the anti-air. Now for the anti-air this ship has eight flak explosions, six inner and two outer, with an outer DPS of the continuous fire being 196, mid being 57, and in inner being 207. Now, this has poor AA due to their short range, since the max range anti-air being 4.6 kilometers, which makes this ship very vulnerable to a lot of CV attacks. And it is also somewhat vulnerable to AP bombs to be able to go through the Citadel. Now, while the damage numbers are okay, their short range renders them in ineffective as they don't have enough time to deal damage so for instance for the new russian cvs where they're really good at staying further out to do damage this ship will suffer heavily against those sending against ships like the emelin or a few others that do longer range attacks further away so like the marco polo the Juice Bay verde is very vulnerable to air attacks and should seek allied aa cover to mitigate the damage
Now, the Giuseppe Verde smoke can protect her, but it also costs her a valuable repositioning tool, so it has to be up to the player to decide whether the airstrikes are worth spending a smoke on or to save it for another instance. Now for maneuverability. Now this ship has a base speed of 32 knots, an 860 turning circle, and a 16 second rudder shift time. It has an excellent base speed, only slightly beaten by the few battle cruisers and fast BBs. Now with this good turning radius, just slightly inferior to the US BBs and the Bairn. The ship does an average rudder shift, better than most tier 9 and tier 10 BBs, though notable inferior to most low tier BBs. Overall, it is an excellent maneuverability thanks to her high top speed and good turning radius. This helps her overall survivability as she can better angle to AP rounds, escape threats with her high speed, or quickly switch flanks as you've been seeing me do throughout this video. Now. The concealment, oh, let's talk about that real quick. With the base being 16.3 for C and 13 kilometers for air. Now, if the best concealment is 13.2 con uh, for the C and 10.5 for air, and a smoke firing penalty is 16.3 kilometers. Now, this concealment is average for the tier 9 BBs. Nothing really remarkable, nothing really remarkable here. But the secondaries will also not increase your detection in smoke, by the way, so that's good. So if you haven't already known, when the secondaries fire in smoke, or like in a storm or something, where they will not increase your detection at all. So you can sit in a smoke and let your secondaries fire and fire and fire and fire, and your detection won't go up. That's why ships like the Schlieffen, running like a vampire with them is really OP. Now, let's go to the next one here. Let's talk about the consumables. Now, the standard DCP is infinite charges. It gives you a 15 second immunity period and 80 seconds reload. Now, for standard repair party, it heals for 0.5% per second of a total of total HP for 28 seconds. Now, this gives you a heal of 9,674 HP base or 11,608 HP with flags. Now, the exhaust smoke lasts 60 seconds base and 69 seconds with signals and also has a 180s base reload or 0.9 smoke and also has a 0.9 kilometer smoke radius. Now, this ship also has a standard fighter or spotter and the spotter gives you plus 20% range with 100 sex duration with a 240 second cooldown and the fighters, you get three fighters for a 60 second duration and 90 second cooldown. Now, the Julius Bay Verde uses a unique exhaust smoke generator, lasting longer and having a larger radius compared to her tech tree counterparts. This synergizes well with her enhanced secondary firepower, although the Julius Bay Verde to safely rain secondary hits on bees within range, it, um, you kind of, it, it needs to be, have spotting while in the smoke. Now you can use the spotter plane to spot enemy BBs while you're in the smoke during the whole duration. So you don't really have to fire at all and you don't have to rely on your allies for spotting. And of course, as your spotter planes are out and about, as they're over your head, they are vulnerable and can be shot down. And it is recommended to deploy spotter planes 5 to 10 seconds before using smoke to maximize the spotting serenity and be able to smoke up and push and use your secondaries. And otherwise than that, the ship has a standard DCP and repair party consumables. So let's talk about my overall impression of this ship. So overall, I'd say the ship is above average skill floor, about average skill ceiling. It is a very unique secondary BB. Uh, the Duspe Verde distinguishes herself as she carries both somewhat effective secondaries and a exhaust smoke consumable. Though her secondaries has lower range, the Duspe Verde can whittle down enemies with their sap secondaries while avoiding counterfire due to her smoke. Um, ideally, the Duspe Verde wants to be within five to 10 kilometers of the enemy 
close enough for her sap segregates to work to wreck havoc, but not too close where she gets torped. Unfortunately, her secondary's detection buffer is about three. Her detection is three kilometers, so it's kind of clever to use islands or attacking isolated ships are a good idea to avoid effects of damage. Now, if Jasmine Verde can't close to secondary range, then she becomes a serviceable, though mediocre, BB. Uh, the guns can still be effective thanks to high AP pin and 27mm overmatch, though poor accuracy and average survivability will hamper her combat effectiveness. Overall, the Jewish Bay Verde is a very interesting and fun to play BB. She requires some skill to get her in optimum position, but she greatly rewards um, cunning players as she tears apart on wary ships with sap secondaries. Now for tips and tricks. Now for spotter, you spotter plane can keep enemies spotted uh, even if the Drisbe Birdie was to smoke up and make sure to launch it a few seconds before deploying the ships to get the full spotting ability. Now, 30 degrees is the best combination for the secondaries and angling. The 90 millimeter guns are less effective, so it's best to avoid using all six unless in smoke. So definitely keep your angle. Um, SAP is best used on cruisers and BBs, and they're not accurate enough to really hit DDs. The optimal range of these secondaries are 5 to 10 kilometers. Too close, the sap will shatter on the belt, and too far, they won't hit at all. Now, you can rush BBs with smoke and then turn away in the middle to get a kiting position. This can be quite effective if you do it correctly, but again, definitely risky to do so. In randoms, I'd say this ship is good while mediocre. Um, if you play it as a standard BB, her close range firepower is only matched by German battle cruisers. For ranked, I'd say average. She's a solid ship, but she still gets outmatched by... She's she's okay. Like She gets outmatched by Musashi, Georgia, Rupert, uh, Kearsarge. A lot of, there's a lot of battleships that can outmatch her, really. Um, for clan battles, I can see this as potential, but... At the same time, with the Rupert and others, I don't know if this ship will be used too much. We'll, have, we'll just have to wait and see. With the Musashi and Georgia always getting banned there's more likely this ship could pop up. But again, I wouldn't really recommend it for client battles. When you have like an Iowa, Kearsarge, uh, Rupert, and other battleships that could take its place quite easily. So, again, you can get this ship for 19,300 doubloons starting on December 23rd. I would not recommend getting this ship, though. I wouldn't really recommend it. Because you can get yourself better options, right? You can get yourself better options. Um, you can get yourself a cure charge for coal, which is a better BB than this ship, so you don't have to pay money for it. And you can also get yourself a better secondary ship for coal, which is the Palmer. So you don't even have to spend money. And you can get a better ship than this. So why spend 19,300 doubloons for a ship that's mediocre, when you can get two other ships for coal, not spend money, that are better than this. So, just saying for that. So, um, I would say in order of ships, to if you want to compare it to the coal ships right now, uh, I would literally do it like this. Let's look at the armory real quick. Let's take a quick peek. Let's see. Ships. Let's see for coal. So, for coal, let's look at the tier 10. Look here. It would literally be the Kearsarge, the Palmer, the Marco Polo, and then it would be the GSP Verde. And you can't even get the GSP Verde for coal. So you can get these three for free with coal. And, and yeah, so that's my take on it. But, yep, yeah, this is Overlord Bell. If you have any questions, concerns, definitely leave them down in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching again. I do greatly appreciate it. Again, I would not recommend this ship. Just wanted to make it all clear for that. But thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. If you guys have any questions, just leave them down below. But yep, I'll talk to you all later. Oh, big stretch, dude. Oh, big stretch. Yeah.